What's going on guys? Welcome back to Pat Outdoors. I finally got the new set of rotors in. These are 160 mil, uh, two millimeter thick, 48 millimeter hole to hole apparently. So these better fit the MX650 because I miss riding my bike. So let's go put these things on and wrap up this hydro brake conversion. Just looking over the new rotors in comparison to the last set that we tried out. They are about the same in overall diameter. They're both say 160 mil, so they better be. And they are the same amount of thickness, so these should definitely work with the new caliper set. Uh, my main concern is really the bolt pattern. This is where we had a problem last time. So as you see, the holes are closer to the center on the old set of rotors. So that said, these should fit the MX650. These did come bolted onto these threaded hubs. These are not going to be used. So we're just going to take all these Allen bolts off and take it off this hub. This is designed to be used on a different style bike. Like I mentioned on the last video, make sure that it is going in the same direction as the original rotor. Sweet. All right, now it should definitely work. This is definitely fitted properly now because now it spins freely. No drag. Now to take the rear wheel off, you need a 19 mil wrench and another 19 mil wrench or 19 mil on a socket wrench. things up. Check out that rotor size difference. Remember, face the rotor in the same direction. Now let's go install this rear caliper and see if it'll line up perfectly with a new rotor. So I was trying to figure out what this noise was. It looks like this bolt is just slightly too long and it just barely makes contact with the one of the spokes on the 
rotor. So I am gonna put an extra washer here just to keep it away from the rotor. No more noise. That would have driven me insane. It took a lot of shifting around and a little bit of adjustment, just rotating the caliper around to get the minimal, minimal drag possible. It spins freely now, locks up immediately. That little bit of drag is gonna go away as soon as I take it out for the first ride and wear these pads in. Now that both front and rear rotors and calipers are installed, and we tested that they both have braking pressure and they're functioning properly. It's now time for the least fun part, which is installing the brake levers and cutting the hoses short and running them through the chassis. Disconnect the hydraulic brake line from the lever. You just have to pop this rubber boot off to access this nut, which you're gonna turn counterclockwise with a wrench. Uh, and then you're gonna pull it out with the brake lever and then I'm gonna end up looping it through this up here and then mating it again with the brake lever. Looking at it again, it does look like uh, I can get away with not having to cut the front one. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is if you're working with any sort of hydraulic brakes and disconnecting the brake lines, that hydraulic fluid for brakes is actually very corrosive and I recommend wearing gloves at all times. I just don't have gloves right now, uh, but I highly recommend wearing gloves whenever working with hydraulic brake lines. So I ended up not having to cut the line short after all. After having both front and rear lines routed through the bike, just so there's enough slack on both sides, make sure that there's no lines or um, wires getting tugged when I'm turning left or right, uh, it ended up being the perfect length. So this is how I routed the rear brake hose, went through the factory hoop, through the frame, I just added the zip tie to make sure that it doesn't move near the tire at all. So I don't have to think about it again. Went through the front and then I looped the line back to the left side. I switched it back again to the normal configuration because I do want to learn how to modulate the wheelies with my left hand while I'm throttling with the right. Uh, for the front, I kind of, feel bad about this one because I didn't loop it through this hole. I wish I did, but this nut just does not fit through with this. And uh, there's an insert, there's a brass insert that I don't have a replacement piece for. So I don't want this to leak or potentially lose pressure while I'm riding it this weekend if I can't find that brass fitting. So I wanna make sure that this thing is riding well this weekend because I have a 30 mile ride coming up with some friends and I can't afford not to have front brakes. So I didn't wanna risk it. So this is how I have this for now. I might redo that portion when I refinish the frame and the fork. Now that everything's routed the way I want it, I am gonna tighten up the brake lines into the brake levers 
And anytime that you're disconnecting hydraulic lines, air always makes it into the system, which makes it a little squishier and not as effective. So I'm gonna end up bleeding the brakes just to make sure these are as effective as they're designed to be. Bleeding this brake kit is the same exact process as it is with most mountain bike brakes like Shimano's. You take this bleeder screw out. It's actually just a Torx bit. Same thing here, it's this one. Uh, and then when you pull the bleeder screw out, make sure you don't lose that seal or O-ring that's at the bottom of the screw. Uh, that's what keeps the system sealed and allows it to feel pressure. Um, and then we're gonna screw in an adapter and a funnel. We're gonna fill that with some uh, brake fluid and then we're gonna keep applying the brakes until all the air from the hose has escaped through the top. And then we're gonna seal the system and test it out. This is the kit that I'm using to bleed the brakes and add some more brake fluid. Uh, it came with all the adapters for different kind of brake kits. And here's the funnel. So it, it, it came very complete. I actually got this kit from Amazon. I will leave a link in the description below if you are interested in checking it out. It's a T15 Torx. Here's that O-ring that I was talking about. Just letting all the air bubbles come out. Just keep pumping the lever. Once you see no air bubbles coming out from the bottom of the funnel, that means all the air has been bled out and you are ready to reseal the system. To pull off the reservoir, the kit actually came with this plug to insert at the bottom. And then you can actually unscrew the whole thing Just like that. In case you're curious what the inside looks like. I'm just gonna leave this like this so I can screw it onto the other side. Oh, the brake lever is nice and firm. Now on this side, the lever has a lot of play it's very squishy, so I know there's a lot of air in this system, so we've got some work to do. And just so you have a good understanding what I meant by air bubbles, yeah, air is coming out. So as I'm pumping this uh, brake lever, it is introducing pressure into the hydraulic line. Naturally, air comes up to the top. Luckily, this is at the very top of the bike, so, it's easy for the air to escape. So we're just gonna keep pumping bit by bit. I think that's it. I don't see any more air bubbles. So we're gonna unscrew this, seal the system back up and we should be done. All right guys, we finally got this brake job done. They're fully installed. Both levers are nice and firm with very little play. And there's a lot of modulation for controlling how much braking power I want. And it grabs hard, but we have not taken it out. I am way too tired. I got work in a couple of hours, so we are gonna cut today short. We're gonna have a lot of time to test this bike out this week, since like I said, we are gonna go out on like a 32 mile round trip ride uh, around the western part of Virginia. This weekend, I'm gonna be joining some friends with uh, like some 84 volt e-bike and some faster scooters. Uh, hopefully I am able to keep up with them. I do have a battery pack that I am gonna install. Hopefully I get a chance to install it before Saturday, but either way, if you are interested in seeing how much more braking power this thing has after the new brakes are installed or seeing how much faster it's gonna be with the battery pack that hopefully I'm gonna install tomorrow or the day after, 
Consider subscribing to the channel and staying tuned. If you found today's video helpful in any way, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you like this kind of content, consider subscribing to my channel. But this is going to be it for today. Thank you for watching.